health challenge, threatening the ability to treat infections in children. Antibiotics are increasingly becoming ineffective as drug resistance spreads globally, making it more difficult to treat infections. In the wake of the superbugs, all bacteria resistant to multiple antibiotics becoming more prevalent, children have been disproportionately affected by the drug resistance. Experts say about 225,000 people in Africa, including children, died due to drug resistance in 2019. One in five who died during that same period developed resistance to treatment. In sub-Saharan Africa, where Kenya is, we have the highest burden of infectious diseases. We have a high death rate of children that are dying. I mean, uh, one in five children dies from uh, a drug-resistant uh, uh, infection. We have, uh, you know, uh, we have, uh, we are, we are not at, uh, have not met our target goals in terms of vaccinations and immunization that will prevent infections. Antimicrobial resistance, experts say, represents a severe threat to child survival, growth and development. Similarly, an immature immune system makes them more susceptible to diseases, including those ones caused by drug-resistant pathogens. It should melt our hearts when we start looking at uh, children that are dying. The reason, some of the reasons that we have a high death rate in these children, one we should know, you know, children are not little adults. Their immune system has not so much grown. They've not been exposed a lot like you and I. And um, we, we are talking about uh, uh, children who have not finished their vaccinations to develop um, enough immunity. We're talking about uh, uh, our children sometimes who go into hospitals uh, where I, I didn't get that, you know, uh, uh, um, that hospitals are uh, manufacturing industries of drug resistance, uh, you know, uh, uh, pathogens. So when they go into a hospital, we don't have clean running water. We don't have uh, medicines available. We don't have a lab system that can tell us, uh, you, know, you know, this is the bacteria that is causing this. This is the medicine or antibiotic they can respond to. They get an infection, it's easy for them to actually, you know, it, it facilitates uh, their deaths. To develop immunity against preventable diseases, Children are often vaccinated against a number of diseases, but a report by the World Health Organization revealed that 25 million children worldwide missed out on life-saving vaccines in 2021. A decline considered the largest sustained ever in childhood vaccination in approximately 30 years. The emergence of COVID-19 largely contributed to this disruption that left children exposed to preventable infections. The routine programs that run, like I mean, uh, uh, immunizations, vaccinations, which are national programs, uh, they were halted in a sense. The routine care that happens for people with diabetes, with people with HIV and AIDS, with people uh, uh, with hypertension, they could not go to hospitals because we couldn't easily move. So what that also did was that then it reduced the number of children that could uh, get any, uh, you know, uh, any vaccines. They could not get the regular immunization that would protect them from infections. The other thing that also is important to note is that we, you know, vaccines are a special product that needs to be kept and even when moved from one place to another between certain temperatures, uh, which we call a cold supply chain system. So what had ended up happening, you know, vaccines that were coming in for, uh, for COVID, they were taking up that storage. They were taking up those places, which are not many in our countries. And so what that did was that uh, uh, UNICEF, for example, had lots of vaccines that could not come in because all that storage space was taken by vaccines. And so we really shortchanged um, our children 
in in that sense uh, probably not intentionally but um, um, but unfortunately inconsequential to our systems that uh, we need to strengthen misuse of the antimicrobials by parents also fuel resistance among children child health experts say that children especially those who live in low resource settings with limited access to health services face an even greater risk most of the self-medication we are seeing in terms of antibiotic use is to manage upper respiratory tract infections and who are the people mostly affected by urtis their children so you'll see mothers and the caregivers rushing to a chemist to buy a moxil or septrin to give their child for a cold, common cold, a flu. Flus and common colds are caused by viruses. They are not caused by antibiotics, uh, by uh, uh, bacteria. And we usually say that they are self-limiting, meaning if you have a viral infection, a cold, a flu, it is expected that it will disappear in the next five or seven days. You don't need an antibiotic. The antibiotic will not help you. What you need is to manage the fever by taking uh, analgesic, that is paracetamol. Number two, you will have to manage the other symptoms of the flu by taking locally made uh, concussions which help the honey and the other things warm water and ensure that there is adequate hydration antimicrobial resistance remains a growing threat to health and human development affecting the ability to effectively treat a range of infections such as sepsis urinary tract infections and some form of diarrhea using antibiotics for instance every year up to three million newborns are diagnosed with neonatal sepsis a life-threatening blood infection most of these infections occur in low and middle income countries like Kenya. Despite the immense death rate of newborns, there are few antibiotics specifically licensed for use in children. Most antibiotics have only been tested for safety and effectiveness in adults, and there are few treatments specifically licensed for use in children. According to the Global Antibiotic Research and Development Partnership Organization, only 38% of antibiotics brought to the market go through pediatric development programs. Most again, again of, the, uh, of the medicines, not just antibiotics that are done, they don't focus on children. And uh, one of the things that we are working towards and we're raising even in this conference is that, you know, when we look at uh, improving access, we have to think about vulnerable populations like children, ensuring that antibiotics that are being manufactured and dosages that are being manufactured, you know, can be used in this vulnerable population. The World Health Organization also sees that around 2 million children are exposed to multi-drug resistant tuberculosis and a further 5 million to rifampicin resistant TB. The global health body also says that out of every two infants newly diagnosed with HIV, one is infected with a virus already harboring resistance to the most commonly used first-line antiretroviral drugs. They estimate a 63.7% resistance to first-line ARVs in infants diagnosed with HIV. The rapidly increasing antibiotic resistance in bacteria means that several classes of antibiotics traditionally used to treat infections among children are no longer working. Hence the need to invest in research in a bid to protect this vulnerable group. Gloria Milimo, KTN News. Thank you.